Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You canines of the world. To another episode of A Desert Art Crusade, Season 2. Tonight, in this, uh, in the merry wonderland that is Odessa, the Merchant of Bones, Ancilla, honored Ancilla of the Clan of Death, is due to accept a formal meeting, a formal introduction from a young canine, quite young indeed, of his clan, the particular bloodline of his clan, an aberration, as it were, bloodline known as, or perhaps if you're in the know in merchant tile circles, you would know them as the family of Giovanni. Having made her way from Venice, to the, Crus the former Crusader states, and now to one of the Caliphate-ruled cities of the Middle East. She has come to negotiate an exchange of knowledge, powerful knowledge. Knowledge that was worth, well, was worth giving a great deal up for, that came at great cost, even to blood gods, even to antediluvians. And she's to arrive within a few minutes within the domain of Lady Astor, who has been ever so kind as to host on the behalf of her clanmates, and perhaps for a little bit of interest. She is ever going so good at counting, uh, counting money. You might mis perhaps mistake her for a Venetian. Alas, she is not. <laughs> and the Merchant of Bones has been set up in a nice... in a nice a large dining room. A fireplace kind of gently roars at the center of the right side of the room. A small long table at the center. And various displays, coats of arms and picture frames line the walls. It is quite is quite a lovely little uh, aristocratic estate uh, that Lady Astor has set up for you. Something to leave an impression. And there, the Merchant of Bones sits, waiting for his. Well, his uh, his contact. Well, what's he thinking right now? Merchant of Bones is simply uh, kind of cocked to the side. His uh, his uh, his cold, clammy hands kind of uh, um, pinching the the bottom of his lip as he kind of just stares 
almost hypnotically at the fire, realizing just how close a symbol of death is for him anyways, particularly. Um, it's not too far from him. But it is also intermingling with the fact of he's not exactly sure what to make of these fellow Giovanni, although he has met one, a younger member, a junior member, um, who seemed uh, normal by their standards enough. But he hasn't met one with any kind of uh, age to them. And um, he wonders if their dealings are as tight and as uh, in their favor as the rumors seem to be. He wonders if he's going to be he wonders if he's going to come up short. He wonders if he's going to be used. The answer will probably be yes to some capacity. As we all use each other to some capacity as well. But he wants to make sure that he's as keen as he can be considering this. Their, their, their family, but not like the way they consider themselves family. And um, he's just interested to see how this goes. Mm. Are you from Royal Clan Law, by the way? For more information on the uh, Giovanni. I'll set you up on a Discord because I forgot to do that again. <laughs> Which dice roll are you doing, sir? One sec. Discord is constructing additional pylons. I see. There's an old meme. That's some unfortunate, but you do succeed. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're all aware that Giovanni are very, very tight knit. They're v mm. they're very insular. It's kind of it's it's half the reason why they're considered a bloodline because they 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 treat themselves as if they are. Mm -hmm. Um, you know that they're very tight knit, and as a result, um, very loyal to each other. They to your knowledge, have not suffered a traitor to live, and have been in many ways more successful at this than even, even the Ventru have been at handling uh, traitors. <laughs> um, and you do know that uh, they do seem to embrace more as a... They, they seem to withhold... Uh, with uh, uh, with the, uh the ties of family that they had in their mortal lives, and build something of a a community based on off of that premise. They treat themselves as if they're a mortal family. They treat if they're still mortal kin as if they were still family. They're very, very familial. All of this just seems kind of lost on Solomon. He's a road of bone swallower. He doesn't understand sentimentality as such. That's true. You understand it may not also just be sentimentality, though. More of a kind of an arrangement. I mean, I mean, it's kind of like almost like a business too. It is very much a business, and it also is very much. Uh... It's 
it can be as much an ob uh, a, a, an obligation as it is as it is something emotional. Hmm. Nonetheless. So yeah, What's so up, he's uh... just yeah, he's just basically sitting there, kind of like you know, doing that like what I explained earlier, and kind of rolling his cane a little bit. The lady Astor doesn't keep you waiting long. Uh, and before long, uh, the door um, is uh, open, first revealing uh, the Lady Astor, and then uh, the woman who comes through after her. She holds the door open for her. As she, uh, as she does so, she just says, Ah, Lady Lucrezia, this is... Actually, you won't say Lady Lucrezia, she'll say, Lady Giovanni, this is... The Merchant of Bones, I believe the gentleman your grandsire was corresponding with. And uh, this woman, rather fine foreign uh, garb, uh, wanders through. She doesn't look particularly native to Venice. She looks much more, um, uh, well, I mean, she looks, she looks like she's from, uh, North Africa. The Merchant of Bones will, uh, ease to his feet, even being a vampire and all the, uh, gifts that it provides eh, he still has this mortal tick about him with his leg and um, it takes him longer than any normal person she's any quite, normal vampire should. she's quite petite um, the lady Astor stands about half a head taller than her and you're about a full head taller than hmm. her the Merchant of Bones also looks surprised. She's not exactly what he figured. Not exactly what he had in his head either. Though that doesn't mean he's not um, um, less impressed. If anything, he's he finds it almost... Um, he's, he almost seems happy that there's uh, some... A variety, so to speak. Um, the talent speaks more than you know anything, um, and he uh, just kind of lays his his cane to rest on the uh, the crook of the couch, like where the seat and the arm kind of meet, or not the a chair, and uh, he kind of just um, steeples his fingers together, like just over his chest or over his belly and uh he just he doesn't really offer a smile but he doesn't really offer um any kind of uh emotion anyways like it's 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 a very just stoic kind of of of, of look of, of, a, of a stare and uh he just he just says <laughs> he just kind of says uh yes lady giovanni it is a pleasure to meet you i am as lady astor said the merchant of bones i am the one who has been corresponding with your grandsire please Come in and talk with me a while. Uh, 
Ah, bonjour, no, Master Matarasi. It is a pleasure to finally meet you. I can assure you that a pleasure is all mine. I take it your trip from Venice has been. Um, hope it was not too long for you and without any issue. I'm afraid the seas were not kind to me. Um, the journey was quite tumultuous. How unfortunate. Though I do hope your time in Odessa has been much more comfortable. And he says this kind of flatly. Like, almost... I mean, he means it, but not in, like almost like a way a venture would spin it if that makes sense it, it almost this kind of just seems like formality for him you know cappadocian and all not very social huh. i would say see si, but i was almost scooped up off the street by angry guards I was not made aware that uh, there was a curfew in the city. Uh, yes, that was instated, I believe, um, by the time you were already on your way. I apologize um, for the uh, for the, any problems that might have caused, or have you been able to? Have you had uh, accommodations made for you to get around freely? Uh, I would not be here if I had not already done so. That's good to hear then. Please, would you like to have a seat? You look eager to get to business. Yes, I would like a seat. Thank you. And that he does smile at, because yes, he cannot. He does not like the small talk. And uh, he waits for her to have a seat before he, you know, sits seats himself and looks to Lady Astor and to see what she's going to do. Oh, she pulls out a seat for Lady Giovanni, and then we'll take a seat. Um, next to you, you kind of all on one side of a long table. Mm -hmm. According to your grandsire, you uh, he said that the, we could come to some kind of arrangement that would be beneficial to both of us. So I wanted to open the um, let you uh, maybe explain to me what exactly um, you all expect for this exchange of uh, knowledge. That largely depends on what you are willing to offer. We are willing to offer hmm. up to three paths that are foreign to your clan. You may, of course, choose to only choose one or two and any combination thereof. Well, perhaps the one I find you and most are uh, interested in, the path of the Sakpoka. That is the path of Ash. And the path of the Cenotaph. Although that third one comes with strings 
What do you mean by strings? It will be at a higher price. Hmm. May I ask why? I'm afraid that is a trade secret. But uh, to explain without giving away too many details, it would be... Uh, To say, uh, simply put, would Giovanni have sacrificed much to obtain such knowledge, and within a fair degree of recency, which increases the value? Mm. Fair enough. I have to say then that I am interested in the path of Ash and perhaps the path of Cenotaph, depending on the arrangement. As far as that goes, is there anything that the Giovanni needs or wants? As Hold, you on might second, uh, Hold on one second, man. Hold on one second, man. I'm being cold. Sorry. God damn it. Much of the is like, wait a second. I got a call. I got to take this. One of his fucking ghost buddies.
Apologies, viewers, for this, for the, not even interruption, just the gap, the silence. It will probably be a few more minutes. Ta-da! All right, I'm sorry. Oop. So yeah, to recap, she was basically offered you free pass. Oh, okay. Um, you can choose any combination or off for various costs. She hasn't stated those costs yet. She just states the path of the cenotaph will be uh, higher because of some factor supposedly it took the Giovanni much more effort to accrue than prior paths and apparently this path appears to be more recent among them mm. a bit disturbing considering that the uh, Capadocians are known for having basically only free paths and they're offering that yeah he kind of just narrows his eyes a little bit and do you mind describing what these paths do, at least path of, path of Ash and Path of the Cenotaph. Well, let's start with the Sepulchre Path. The Path of the Sepulchre allows you to interact with and later control and even harm wraiths, ghosts as you would understand them to be. At its initial levels, you will only may be able to perceive and converse with such creatures. Towards mastery, you will be able to control them. Damage them, if needs must. And even destroy them. Oh, with a relative snap of the fingers and a whisking of the hand. The puff of ash. Actually, one second before she moves on. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. The puff of ash is, you could say, uh, something of a complementary art to the path of a sepulchre. It enables one not just to interact with wraiths, or ghosts, sorry, but also the rest of the land of the dead. The Shadowlands, the land beyond, the world beyond this one. I'm not sure if you are familiar or educated in the Shadowlands. If not, uh, I can explain that later if you wish. I have made some progress on my own. I've been able to tap into the Shadowlands to some extent. I've, that was in that has been within my um, power to do so thus far though to the extent of the Giovanni those it pales in comparison this one has the future what'd you say and she just made this up the future check and got seven successes Oh, okay. I, I wouldn't be able to beat that anyway, so... <laughs> Everything's fine. Right. 
well, you will find uh, much of your limitations removed and surpassed if you were to accrue and master the path of ash. It allows you to see beyond uh, Vusudario, to speak the tongue of the Dark Kingdoms, to take of its treasures. You can even thin or thicken the Sudario as you wish. Uh, roll me... You have a cold <laughs> necromancy, right? Yeah. So yeah, roll that. I think he might have seen that in person. But... Roll difficulty 8 when she mentions Sudario. Necromancy, a cult. Your, your, your specialty definitely applies here. Two, three. Oh, sorry. One, two, three. Okay. Three successes. You understand what the Sudario is. You haven't heard of it as the Sudario before. Um, but, um, oh god. Oh god. Um, it's, it's literally Italian for the shroud. Gotcha. Um, it is, to your understanding, the barriers, the, 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 the spiritual, mystical barrier between the physical world, uh, also known as the Skinlands, and... Uh, the lands of the dead, also called the Shadowlands, which are sort of overlaid, um, sorry, over, um, overlaid each other. Sorry, that the over that overlap one another. Hmm. Um, right now, in you are the Shadowlands takes up the same space as the physical world does. But at the same time, it, it doesn't, because they're sort of misaligned with each other. For example, in this estate you're in right now, there would be a building, there would be something where this place is, but it is likely decayed. It might be an entirely different building. Mm -hmm. It could be rubble. It could be a campsite. It could be something else entirely. Gotcha. It's more like The Shadowlands is more like the world's memory in a way. Well, because it contains everything that's passed away and that's gone. Mm -hmm. The Shroud not only prevents you from crossing the lands of the dead, crossing into the lands of the dead, it also prevents ghosts from crossing into the lands of the living.
which is why you see more of their activity, but not with them. The thicker the shroud is in an area, the harder it is for a ghost to act. The thinner it is, the easier it is for it to act, to the point where it may even manifest. And you understand that where there is a lot of death, the shroud is fairly thin. Where there is a lot of life, the shroud is fairly thick. Race must have a heyday during the height of the plague. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, if you're using the Puff of Ash, I'd be like, yeah, using that some minus two death. <laughs> um. But yeah. Hmm. A very interesting path. One that I believe I would probably benefit from the most. Though, there's still the third one. Uh, the path of Vicino Taf. A fairly complex path. Something of an outlier. It is less... Inherently practical than the other two paths, but the grants one perhaps a powerful niche in the trade of the dead. The path of the cenotaph analyzes the connections between the dead and the living and what binds the dead to the mortal plane. Through the path of the Sinotaf, one can understand these connections, manipulate them. And that mastery even create them and apply them to others. Beyond the beyond the dead? Well, no, two of the dead. Gotcha. Necromancy deals in the dead, not with mortals, not with the living. Excuse my ignorance there, I just wanted to make sure I was uh, understanding correctly. It is quite all right. The Giovanni were embraced to clarify these matters after all. That's why I reached out to you all. I'm coming to the end of my interest in the physical. I wanted to learn about the immaterial, so to speak. Yes, there is only so much one can learn through the process of death. It is useful to know what happens, how the body crumbles, where the soul goes, but then what happens after the fact is of, dare I say, even greater importance. And that's where you see where I am at now, where my mm. curiosity lies, and where I wish to shore up my understanding of death. I suppose it depends on what you wish your specialty to be, or whether you're willing to pay the price to obtain more powers, more knowledge, which I am amenable to. And my deadline would be happy to provide. Well, I meant to say, I do not possess all of the prerequisite knowledge and tutelage to provide this to you immediately. But depending on what you decide, 
I would be able to acquire someone who could. Minus nods slightly at that. <clears throat> First and foremost, I believe my interests lie within the second path that you had mentioned, the path of Ash. Though I do have to say that that is not that the third path, the path of the Cenotaph, has not picked my interest as well. Hmm. As far as the as far as the um, the time for the acquisition of knowledge and materials, that is not as long as it's not um, too uh, too long, we'll say. That could be forgiven. There are still some things that I wish to button up before I actually make this transition to um, this new um, set of knowledge and devote my time to it. So that would not be an issue. We are Kenneths. We have plenty of time. Exactly. So you uh, you understand what I am interested in now. The only thing I did is there is to it now is what do you want in return? Uh, before I do, if I may apply a bit of context, sure. I will be remaining of in a city in the long term. Looking to aid the Cappadocians as a member of your clan and to expand our interests. I think you'll find some like-minded individuals here and to some extent, maybe not in your way, but advancement of the Cappadocians in general, I believe you'll find a sympathetic cause among some of us. Oh, yes, I'm glad you made the decision of having the Lady Astor host. And uh, Lady Astor just um, smiles and says, Thank you, and if I may, I would be quite interested in your clan's offers myself, if at some point we may be able to make an arrangement. Of course. As I've said, clan, yeah, which one should say clan? That's me getting a few centuries out of myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Um, she'll say, the Giovanni uh, are embraced to clarify these issues. And I'm happy to be able to clarify. So. As I would be saying within the city, my family would be looking to expand their interests both within the physical and the spiritual worlds. For the path of the sepulchre and the path of ash, we would ask for 
a free major boon's pa path. Uh, you need not worry about what you would have to pay back on some of these. I already have an arrangement in place for at least one of these boons. And just to clarify, she said three major boons per path? Per path. Wow. Okay. Hey, man. Disciplines aren't cheap. I got to Hey, I'm, <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> Uh, as far as I know, that sounds about the ballpark there, uh, from it's... my knowledge. Yeah. It could, in theory, be cheaper than that. And, you, I mean, in, you can negotiate if you want. Um, uh, I mean, that's part of trade, so... Yeah. Um, Obviously, she's leveraging the fact that you want this. Mm -hmm. A path of a cenotaph would be a single blood boon. Due to its scarcity and the great effort and risk of life that Giovanni went to to obtain said knowledge. Merchant of Bones just starts clicking his nails along his cane and thought, just mulling over it. Hmm. Quite the price for knowledge. Knowledge is power, and power does not come cheap. It does not, no. Any fool would think otherwise, but... How about this? Maybe... I will offer you... For the Path of Ash... An exchange of knowledge. Surely there's something that the Cappadocians have that you would be interested in as well that you can make use of, no? I believe that would be my current state of being. I'm afraid to say that, uh, um, Master Matarasi, that much of the knowledge contained by the Cappadocians is already known to the Giovanni at large. Hmm. Of course, I do hear of another bloodline within the clan. That possesses a rather unique strain of our abilities. He kind of just raises a brow. A Romy Cavitation War. Difficulty 8 again, because it's about bloodlines within the clan. Mm, three or two. Uh, you get two. Okay, she's talking about the Lamia. The Lamia. Mm. A bloodline descended from JPEF. Uh, they're largely warrior um, warriors or warrior priestesses, uh, almost entirely female, 
um, that serve as bodyguards by and large to high ranking um, uh, to high ranking Cappadocians. Hmm. I assume you speak of the warrior priestesses born of J born from Japa. Hmm. Of quite different stock from ourselves. And have developed a rather unique aberration of necromancy. For purposes outside my area of expertise. But perhaps in your travels you have come across said power. Or may even possess it yourself. In this, the Giovanni would be more than happy to accept this trait of knowledge. Hmm. Unfortunately, I've only heard whisperings here and there. I have not seen it for myself, nor come across it yet. That is a shame. But perhaps, as a member of a, an older and more esteemed lineage than the Giovanni Yupa, could perhaps take pains to procure it for us, or convince one of the Lamier to teach, hmm. teach one of us for particular methods. He just kind of narrows his eyes a bit more, focusing, thinking about it, trying to... He's never thought about the Lamia in that capacity before. Um, <clears throat> but... Uh, this is interesting. Hmm. If you're willing to... As long as you understand that I cannot provide that at the moment, perhaps I might be able to work towards that. I... We would need a guarantee that you will have uh, be working towards it. And at the... With a degree of haste. I will not lie. The Giovanni would expect results in the short term. Within a year. Based on the fact that you are a well-regarded Cappadocian with the means to accomplish that task, To our knowledge. I'm sure if you were to attain a position of prominence within the city, you would be able to reasonably request uh, a Lamia guard. Your life has been put at uh, risk more than once, if you have made it this far, no? Particularly within a city full of angry soldiers. Wielding touches like a mob. He just kind of turns his head and looks at her. Honestly, I'm more impressed you have survived this long without a card. You are clearly a gentleman of skill. I have made sure I have certain connections to make sure that I have, we'll call them friends here, to uh, 
have a interest in my well-being at least. The high clans are ever so resourceful, are they not? <laughs> but they are. Mm. Though I must say, it would make my life easier if I did have a more established uh, bodyguard. And there is some interest in taking on a position of power, I must say. And you said within a year. Within a year. You would have some time. And to our knowledge, you are quite old. Again, I'm somewhat surprised you do not already have one. And if I was to agree to this, what would this cover? Would this cover one path? If you acquired for us a teacher of the path, it would cover one uh, one of the paths you wish to purchase. It would not, however, cover the path of the cenotaph, uh, the boon from the path of the cenotaph. However, I believe there is an arrangement we come, can come to there at a later date. If you would be willing to accept the boon now. Accept the blood boon? Hmm. And I believe it would go some way uh, towards you, towards aiding you with your other task of, of acquiring us a teacher, a mutually beneficial arrangement. However, I would need to hold on to the boon for the moment. However, I doubt it would take very long. If, of course, you wish to accept such an offer and you are not required to, I certainly will not take offense if you do not. Hmm. I almost want to say he looks at Lady Astor for a second. Almost as if he's kind of like searching her to see if she has any opinion on the matter. <laughs> She's well, we perception empathy. <clears throat> oh, <laughs> faint heart deals are so fun. Huge perception empathy. Well, it's not as bad as Gerard's, but. I think I only got one there for going with diff six. Okay, this pressure he doesn't apply here. If I, I still find her specialty really funny, so <laughs> she makes two successes, which is enough to beat you. So. Yeah. Well, you have seven dice, not as bad as Gerard's, my ass. That's literally over triple his dice pool. <laughs> Get out of here with that bullshit comparison. <laughs> Hmm. 
so you would have to take a blood boon now in order for reconsideration later? Hmm. It would be... Consider it a delayed transaction. And just to make sure she said this would also help with getting a teacher. Mm -hmm. You can roll perception if you want here if you want. Yeah, sorry. God damn it. She's not lying. She's being straightforward with you. And she has not put any pressure on you to accept. She has openly stated you may you may refuse and we can work out something else if you really want to. Well she hasn't said we can work out something else, but you have the option to walk away. And she has stated that is like not and she wouldn't take offense to it. Mm -hmm. And if I may ask just one more time, there's no way that maybe we can discuss maybe learning this at a, at a later date since you are staying perhaps we can work on a real deal for the path of ash and maybe revisit the path of cenotaph later is that off is that not on the table I would consider what is on offer now to be something of a package deal. One boon affects the other. Of course, we could uh, work out a completely different arrangement. If you, if you wish so, I would. I'd be upset if that uh, negotiations had the. Uh, not a poor fruit tonight, but we take these things in steps. It is understood that we do not always immediately align in your deal. Hmm. But if I were to accept your offer of acquiring a new path of knowledge for the Giovanni The guarantee of that comes from the delayed transaction involving the blood boom, that which I cannot divulge as of this moment, as it requires other factors to be in play for it to smooth out the transition for yourself, one that I know I can achieve, but not one I can achieve if you do not uh, permit the transaction to go forth. Again, we can work out a separate arrangement. I'm happy to uh, put different cards on the table if it suits your tastes. Considering the the path that Lamia follow, 
and it's as obs is as obscure as it is. Yeah, keep in mind when I had you roll for Valamia. Oh, it didn't tell Sorry. you what their path was. Sorry, you know it's you. You know basically what Lucrezia has told you that it is obscure, which is an and a weird strain by her standards, which is weird because you didn't even know they had a weird. They didn't even know they had a separate path of necromancy up until now. Yeah. So, I mean, I think you would say is as obscure as it seems to be. And most likely relatively new to the Giovanni. I would almost think that the path, the Cenotaph path would be equitable to gaining a teacher for this new path or this this set of necromancy Normally, I would agree. But... Uh -huh. The risks the entirety of a Giovanni took to acquire this knowledge is not the same as the risks that have been taken by well, that will be taken by yourself. Hmm. Uh, that is the... How to say, um, the... The thing that raises its value, it is not just its scarcity. And the obscurity, it is the effort for risk for blood spilt. Blood has been spilt over this knowledge, over this power. Much of it. And many years, decades of effort. Of coordination. Of sacrifice from not only myself, but the in uh, the, the the Giovanni entire. If I were to I would be misrepresenting the Giovanni if I were to undervalue it. And without that blood boon in place as part of a delay transaction, I would not... I would not have a guarantee that you would be able to obtain this... Lamian path within a short time frame. Hmm. Normally we would allow a greater space of time, but because of the sensitivity of the knowledge on display, that which is desired in return would be requested not only to a higher standard but in a more timely fashion i understand uh, yes i'm i'm sure if i may emphasize it is this knowledge that i offer you that resulted with uh 
that resulted in the embrace of my great grandsire. This was knowledge that the founder of the Cappadocian clan saw fit to barter over personally. Such is the enormity of the knowledge that is on offer. In fact, based on that, it could it would be it would not be unreasonable to argue that in that manner I am undervaluing said knowledge. However, in you we the Giovanni see a mutually beneficial partner. and an under-respected gentleman of great knowledge. Well then. Despite the scholarly nature of of your clan, you are more educated than most. Like us, you have been embroiled in the physical and mystical study of death since before your own embrace, no? I have. It's kind of been my life. Mm. It has been my life. It has been my own life as well. Hmm. I will... I will provide you a blood boon for that. <clears throat> And I will work on getting a teacher from the Lamia for the second path. Though for the blood boon, Um, never mind, never mind, never mind. I would be willing to accept this, uh, this arrangement if the Lady Astor here would stand witness to this boon, or this, these exchange of boons and services. We can call it a deal. I believe we can call it a deal as well. Lady Astor simply nods. I stand witness to the exchange of these boons and services in between your respective selves. I don't believe I need to reintroduce you to each other. <laughs> ah. She clasps her hands together. Grazie, Master Matarasi. I shall ensure that you are properly tutored to Venice's respected pass as soon as 
as soon as possible. I can begin tutoring you myself. On the ways of the path of ash, and as for the path of the cenotaph, I can arrange for that. It will require a few, a few weeks, maybe a few months of preparation at most. But I can, uh, I'll be able to begin your teaching within that time span. As for the Path of Ash, it may begin immediately. If I take any longer within one second. If I take any longer than arranging you. Mentorship within the Path of the Cenotaph. I shall have another member of our bloodline come down to talk to you personally. If that is not possible, then I shall be named Oathbreaker of the bloodline of Giovanni. And no doubt, brought to justice for making a promise that I cannot keep. Well, considering how well, the rumors of how you keep your your word when it comes to your deals I don't believe there will be any problem with that we are a family of merchants merchants do not get by by breaking their words but they do not <clears throat> It is the way of scam artists and con men sitting in the corner of a street, peddling tarot and fortunes. We deal in real wealth. But that is our business concluded. And I believe you are here for business. So I will not take up any more of your time. Well, it if you're going to get a blood boon out of me, well, I assume that we might as well get more acquainted with each other. If you wish to stay and talk, I do not mind. Perhaps under less formal circumstances. Hmm. Would that be amenable to you? Of course, I would prefer such. After all, I'm not one for... <sighs> Even though I do appreciate Lady Astor's accommodations, this is not really my element. Oh. I think the Lady, Lady Astor has put on a fine showing for uh, our introductions. For that, I am most grateful, because she has indeed. We've met any both. I've hardly said a word. <laughs> she ain't lying. <laughs> well, you provided exactly what was needed, and that was hospitality. And again, thank you. Mm -hmm. And then... Merchant of Modes, I guess, will go to stand and offer his hand to Lady Giovanni.
Can go for her, your hand, sorry. Yeah, Lady Giovanni, I guess, to help her out if she's leaving. She'll get up. Out is quite the right. I would, uh... I would not abuse your goodwill. <laughs> Fair enough. Then I, uh, again, must thank you for your time and all the trouble you took to come and see me here all the way out in Odessa. It has been worth a journey, I assure you. And he just smiles smally at that. She will walk away. And, uh, I'm assuming Lady Aster, Merchant of Bones, is alone. He would just kind of look at her. <laughs> and, uh, just say, so what do you think? Honestly. I think, how are you going to get a Lamia to your side? They're usually only reserved for Elders. Maybe she gave you 50 years. <laughs> I guess I'll just have to do 50 years of work within a year. Sounds like you. Although she did say she had a plan, I can only imagine what it is. We'll have to see. Well, I'm interested to hear it. And... Worries me. That they knew about your pre-embrace life. They've clearly done a significant amount of research on your origins. They got you too. They definitely seem about their business, if that makes sense. If nothing else, it 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 it, uh, it makes certain that they definitely took this journey seriously. I would want to know, especially about this aberrant strain or this aberrant knowledge of necromancy. Hmm. That alone was almost worth this sitting. One sec. Gonna roll four. She's not. Hmm. I'm afraid I know about as much as you do regarding the Lamia. The Primogen could call for one, considering his paranoia. I'm surprised he hasn't done so already. Scratch that, he probably has. He just hasn't told us. If that's the case, we need to make sure we find that out for sure, because that's going to be a problem. Or it could be used to our advantage. That would mean there would be a Lamia already here. You wouldn't have to go looking. But how do we how do we draw them out? Or at least identify. Lamia are bodyguards. If the primogen is under threat, then they will come. Or we can just have a clan meeting with the Primogen and ask him. He hasn't held one in a while, I've heard almost nothing from him. While our clan rots on the vine. To give the wordplay. 
no, it's quite on the nose there. I think it's about time we start thinking seriously about some change. Hmm. Have you ever thought of rising, Lady Aster? That's a very interesting question. She smiles. Do you know the smile is fucked up when it's spelt wrong? <laughs> she just smiles at you. I've always wished to do our clan proud. And I have been looking to take a position for quite some time. Harpy, in particular. That's what you would prefer? Is Harpy? It's not what I prefer. But it's what I've been... working towards for the longest time, of course, if a position opens up elsewhere. Then I'll see what I can to fill the void and keep our clan's place within this city well maintained and secure. Yes, we definitely need to get back within the court. I think I might know where to start at least. Mm. I'll see if I can make some headway into finding this primogen that we're supposed to have. Well, I'll see what side of security he has on display. With any luck, you might have your Lamia right there, right under your nose. Hmm. If not, well, I'm sure something can be worked out. If not, it was nice knowing you. <laughs> eh, well, death comes for us all in one way or sometime or another. Some sooner than later. Yeah, it's really an enough. obstacle for someone who can manipulate us on the <laughs> mystical level. That's true. But I understand your point. <laughs> well then. Well then. If business concluded, I don't think there's any reason for you to be within my domain anymore. Oh, you're kicking me out already. I understand. Well, <laughs> I will... Get to hobbling then. I will, uh, I guess we'll be in contact regarding our primogen. He yes. kind of says, derisively. And be careful regarding that Giovanni. She's not telling you what the boon is for. Then it means she's not sure whether or not you'll like it. <laughs> I you didn't might. think it mattered. I might like it? No, you might, you might not. I suppose it depends on what her offer is. Hmm. Based on what she said, it seems to be because she has some sort of 
preparation she needs to make beforehand, but even if that were the case, I don't see why she wouldn't be able to tell you. Unless it is sensitive, dangerous information. But what would that be for someone who just arrived within this city? That is very observant of you. I did not pick that up. Well, they clearly did their research regarding you. The question then remains, what about the rest of us? Hmm. She stated her intent to remain. I wonder if it's linked to that. To some extent, I did think she would stay. Though I didn't, though, and I do understand that there is opportunity in Odessa, especially under, since we're now on back in recovery from the plague in a manner of speaking in a manner of speaking and I have heard from my own contacts that the curfew is to end so really I've not heard that knowledge, power and a freedom to walk on the street what more could one canite ask for? <laughs> You're right. Cannot deny that. Well then, do have a good evening, Lady Aster. And again, thank you for your time and your hospitality. It's always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. I'll be seeing you. <clears throat> and he just gives her a, a uh, like a goodbye and some kind of Turkish, whatever they say. <clears throat> and then uh, he'll kind of uh, make his way out. To his carriage, most likely, because she's all the way across the other side of a dust. <laughs> yeah, I think that is where we can end our scene. Thank you, Pepper, for playing. Thank you, watchers, watching, and we'll see you all next time.